In this workbook, I have a pivot table that is based on sales data, and I would like it to be easy for people to filter this list so that they can see the dates for a specific year or quarter. And to do that, I could group the dates, but that has a little side effect, and we'll see what that is and a couple of ways we can work around that. So I'll right-click on one of the dates and click Group. I don't want months, I would like years and quarters, so I'll select those and click OK. It now creates two columns, one for the year and one for the quarters. And if I click the drop-down arrow in either of those, I can see the four quarters listed here, but it also creates a less than and the first date, and a greater than and the last date, so it creates two new items. I'll cancel here, and you can see the same thing for the years. There are only two years, but it has created four items. There's no way to remove those. You can uncheck them, but it doesn't really have any effect. I'll click OK. So those items stay in the drop-down filters. You'll also see those extra items if you add a slicer. So I'll go to the Insert tab, click Slicer, and I'd like one for the order date and the years. Click OK. And now in each of these slicers, you can see those two extra items at the end. So it might confuse people if they're not familiar with pivot tables and grouping. There's no way to remove them. You could hide them by making the slicer a bit shorter, but that's not a long-term solution. One thing you can do as a workaround is hide the text on those labels. So if I right-click on the Order Date field and go to Field Settings, I'll select Layout and Print, and then check Show Items with No Data. So those before and after items have no data. So they would appear now. We can see it here and below. I can click on this and just type a space instead of its text. That will get rid of that one. And on this one, I can type two spaces. So that's a different item than we've already got. So I'll press that. And you can see that it also disappears in the slicer. So you could do the same thing for years. It's still a little confusing, but at least you're not seeing the text. Another solution would be to use formulas in your source data to calculate the years and quarters or years and months if you can. So in this data, I've got a column that is order year and it just has a formula that calculates the year. And here I've got one that calculates the date and changes it to this text which is the four digit year hyphen and two digit month. So you can use those fields instead of the date you wouldn't have to group it, you would just add that field. So if I take my years and order date out, then I could put order year into the rows. It puts in 2013 and 14, and because it's not grouped, it just uses the items that are in the data, so you don't get those strange entries. Now I'm going to take that out and put our order date back. and I will ungroup that. So we're back to the original table. If you have Excel 2013, you can use a timeline instead of grouping. We'll get rid of this slicer. I'll right click on it and cut it. Instead of that slicer, we'll use a timeline. So click anywhere in the pivot table, go to the Insert tab, and click Timeline. It will only show the date field, so I'll check Order Date, click OK, and here's my timeline. There's a drop-down at the right, so I can select Years, and it just shows the two years. Now when I click, it will just show 2014 or 2013. Without any grouping, it just shows those dates. So it's acting as a filter, and if I select Quarters, I can select any specific quarter to see those amounts, or I can stretch that out. I can click on another one. I can drag over a few of them and just shows those items. And you can also go down to months or days. 
there's no extra information showing it's just showing what's in your data it's not adding those before a start date and after start date items so it's a cleaner way to look at your data it's not grouping or showing subtotals but you can focus on a specific period without seeing extra items in the filters for more Excel tips and tutorials, and to download the sample file for this video, please visit my Contextures website at www.contextures.com.